folks and welcome back to Take Me To Your Paradise. We're live here in the Morven Lounge this morning with my two good men, Mr Ryan Clifford, Mr Alan Stullen. Start off with you this time, so I started off with him in the Dylan Show. How are you, pal? Fantastic. Good. Aye. Lovely day here in Glasgow. Yeah, where else? Yeah, it's been nice as well. very bright compared to what we're, we're usually getting, so mm-hmm. aye, very nice and Celtic are winning as usual, so... What more you can ask for in your life, mate. I hope you're well. 100%. I am good, man. Ryan, yourself, pal. I see you're well, well turned out today, wee man, in your outfit. No, it's, you look pretty. What is it dapper, as they call it's it? It's tough at the top, mate. You need to dress to impress these days, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, It's who he's trying to impress, <sighs> Alan. It's mere in, mere in my head, mate. A bit of Chanel blue on you, mate. You're sorted, do you know what I mean? Um, but no, I'm good. Like Alan says, a bit of decent weather for this time, he, in, this time of year in Glasgow, so... It's always good to have um, good weather in Glasgow, it makes you better when you wake up, spin your steps. So, but like Alan says, our Celtic are obviously winning decent performance in the second half. Um, Throughout our semi final, mate, which is the main thing, but we're all good. Everything's in a rosy in the garden with Celtic. We're obviously, speak about maybe one or two injuries that could maybe affect us in the next few weeks, but overall, mate, it's good and I hope you're well as well. I am tired this morning, man. I, I struggled to get up this morning. Ended up running late, tired to the nursery run, school run. It was a bit of a nightmare, to be fair, but. Uh, Aye, and as I said folks, we're in the Morven Lounge, and just while I'm on that subject, here you are, we poster, I'll see if you can see that, there you go. So as you all know folks, the Celtic Unrestricted View are hosting an evening in here with ex-Celtic winger Joe Miller. And it's on Saturday the 19th of October, tickets are £10, and that says on the dial show you can... Pay into our PayPal. If you don't know the PayPal, we'll put it up for you. Don't worry. Um, but the the key is, lads, we'll try to get people in the door. It is ten pounds for your money. There, you're getting an interview with Joe with us, um, a photograph with Joe in the premises, and a live DJ that's coming for AB Entertainment, Mister Alec Beveridge. Alan, I don't know about you, mate, but I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be a great night. Just to just to mention as well, from this moment, the the tickets are now available yes. behind the bar. Uh, so you will be given a wristband for that particular night uh, if you come up and pay your ten pounds behind the bar. So tickets from this point now are now available. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good night. Mm-hmm. Obviously, here for ex Celtic players and. Well, good friend Bev doing the DJing as well, so mm-hmm. it should be should be a very good night and one to look forward to. Wonder if Big Bev's gonna turn up his double denim that one now. No? I know, obviously, we might put you to shame with doing that right enough, but uh, I'm looking forward to it, mate. We'll try and we'll try and coach Joe on it, Joe. We'll see how Joe gets on. Um, but no, that's will be a fantastic night. It's always good to speak to um, players that have played with the, the club that we love and the guys that we idolise and. They've lived a dream. It's always good to get to know their story and yeah. their career and how they've rise to kind of obviously playing boys club and then up to professional. And obviously, back when Joe played, it was probably more on your talent as well because nowadays you've got to be athletes. I know yep. back then they were still very fit and stuff, but I think back then when I know I'm talking like it's no 56 years ago, but football's changed in a matter of Don't years. Be that to Joe, but I'll be there, man. You're upset. Um, but f- football's changed now, and that kind of team Joe played under with Celtic. You, it was probably back then, it was about how good you were as well. It wasn't just all about being fit. Obviously, football's changed now, it's more athletic and it's all about sports science. Yeah, and, yeah. But obviously, there was maybe small bits of that back then, but compared to now, football's night and day compared to then. So it'd be good to get to know Joe's opinions, obviously, then, now, and just overall his career and his story. And it'd be good for the fans to know that as well, because obviously, a lot of fans have probably not heard about Joe's story as well. So it's obviously um, good to hear about um, that as well. I met him a couple of years ago with Tosh McKinley. And obviously Tosh played for us longer yeah. than, than Joe did. Well, so that I says to Joe, I says, oh, Tosh was my time. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm younger than him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is. Nothing but sticking yourself in it, huh? But because Joe had obviously moved on uh, from Celtic, uh, probably <coughs> near the time that I was getting into football, <coughs> Tosh McKinley was still still playing for Celtic. That, that yeah. was my, my thoughts behind that, but I get firmly put my place with Joe at that time, saying that he was younger than Tosh Ah, he's no slow. Joe's always been the same. He's no, he's definitely no slow. And like I say, he'll be, I think he'll be on the ball tonight as well, because he's 
if you say something wrong to him, you, we're going to need to do our homework, uh-huh. boys, because if you say something wrong to him, I think it's one of the ones. It's, it's a, no, I, I, I didn't do that, or I didn't say that, and he, he'll, he'll put you in your place. But, yeah, as I say, looking forward to the night myself, um, hearing some of Joe's stories and playing under Big Caesar and all that as well, and some of the boys that Joe played with back in the day as well, and he played with my, obviously, my idol as well, Paul McStay, so I learned some stories about Paul, and... Uh, I've heard stories about Paul as well, and that, um, he's got this enough personality and all that, and I, I can't remember, for the life of me sitting here now, I cannot remember the name of it, and it's, uh, I've heard Jackie McNamara telling the story, and uh, Paul used to turn into this guy whenever they went to night suit and parties and all that, he used to go in, come back all dressed up as this, whatever this character is, it was in his head. But apparently it was quite funny. I'm going to get a... Split personality. Aye, no split personality, but I think he just used to, for fun, aye. he used to turn aye. into this person. And he used to, it was like a name, mm-hmm. and I can't remember the name of it. And I'm, I'm sure it's a foreign name. If a few boys not have any idea. I've heard a story right, now. okay, okay. Yep. So I'll need to, I want to get a load down after Joe about that as well. But yeah, just as Alan said, folks, the, the tickets are now available in the Morven Lounge. So if you want to come up, and what will happen is your name will go into a, a guest list, and then on the night you'll be handed a wristband when you come in and t- we, we get your name ticked off the list as well. So it's ten pounds for a good wee night and some good laughs as well. And uh, aye, so I thought today would be a nice wee opportunity for us also lads to to have a wee chat about Celtic's new signings and yep. just how we settling in. Boys have played a couple of games now. One or two of them have shone like a big beacon, uh, let's just say. So, start off with you, Ryan. Um, new signings, I think we're all, we're all probably going to say the same thing about Arnie Engels. Uh, but overall, mate, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy with the, the window. I'm quite happy with the depth to the squad. And I'm quite happy with the, the obviously, what we're seeing on the pitch. I, I think, obviously, the depth in the squad is good in terms of numbers. Um, there's... I think obviously we a few injuries with Johnson and Vickers at the moment. <coughs> They'd obviously been the team. Your, your bench is looking okay when we're at full strength in terms of obviously for the, the game against them, they were close to water. Yeah. And then the Pratislava game, the bench was really good. Um, some really key players could come on and make a difference. But I think we did see a wee bit in the Falkirk game that maybe some of the French players aren't they really able to step up and maybe maybe make Celtic better. I know yep. the second, well, if you want to call them second choice, or second choice right backs or third choice left backs etc etc they're obviously not going to be to the full quality mm-hmm. the first guy but you want the quality not to step down a wee bit yeah and I do feel if Ralston and Wells come in the quality's majorly going down a wee bit and that's not what you want obviously Nerovsky I think Nerovsky for me should be ahead of Welsh after that performance I don't think Welsh covered it in, in glory but in terms of the new signings the boy Val- uh, boy Valley um, Valley Valley um, His name's Valle. Valle. Um I don't think anybody can really judge him on um, 60 minutes, 50 minutes against Falkirk because one, it's his debut. I think he done well now. Two, it was a changed team. He had a few wee shaky moments the first half, but going forward, he, was, he looked technically good going forward. Mm-hmm. He set up the Bernardo goal with some nice touches. That was lovely. Um, and let's be fair, I'm like I said in the Ireland show, he was playing in front of Palmer who wasn't really doing much for him. And it's very hard as a fullback if you're forward in front of you isn't it the end of Joe Byron mm-hmm. because then you're suspect to Everton and that boy who played for Falkirk was decent he gave Valley a wee bit of, uh, by a, wee bit of a, a tough time so uh, you, you've got to give him and trust the benefit of the doubt you can't judge somebody in one performance because yes. you can talk about Lambert didn't have the best a few games last never the best a few games um, recently who I'm trying to who else recently Joy, Kuhn, Kuhn, the Kuhn, half of, uh, Kuhn there you go. Contract, Kuhn, yeah. I know he had a few issues, but people fans were calling him a dud. He's not up to it. It's a waste of three million. And now, now he's, he's probably the best winger in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Take away maybe Maeda, but in terms of technical ability, Kuhn's well more than a three million pound player now. Yeah. So if you, I know Kuhn signed in January, but he's back in now after pre season. He looks a different player. He looks energised. He looks like the Kuhn that probably we expected to sign. Um, so him and Valle and Trusty, I think they, they'll be alright because they've played at a decent level. Don't get me wrong, I know Trusty's not played European football before. 
I don't know, I don't think Valle did with Barcelona, I know he played a lot with Levante, but they weren't in Europe, so these guys have got first team experience, so they're not mm. coming in and just, like, they've, they've not played football before. But once you're in a settled team, if Thursday's next to Vickers or if he's next to Scales, who might not be a buddy's cup of tea, but they know he's playing well, mm. so Scales is a bit more experienced now than then maybe trust the can in a Celtic team. Yes. But if he's playing next to somebody who's able, then I think you'll see the, the light. Mm. Arnie Engels, listen, I think the guy's a real deal. I don't want to be too far alone because it's only two and three games, but even his, his, his assist for Kuhn, that was just delightful. Yeah. That's just effortless. Um, and obviously, Adam Mida, if you back to you signing. Um, didn't it be great in the first half, but obviously with the, the better players come on the second. I, I, I don't want to say better players, but... the. If you want to call it, the first teamers came on and changed the game and Adam Eder looked a different player. So, um, who else new signings? That's us, isn't it, really? Isn't it? McCown. McCown. Ah, uh, he's done well. Um, he looks I think he'll play more than maybe we expect. I think he'll come in and do well. And I think the boys eager to do well. I think that's that's good when you, you, you want to do well. He, he knows what it's all about being a Celtic fan. He's, he's wanted to do well for the, for the club and himself and obviously his family as well. So I think McKill will be a good bit of business. One million, one point one, one million pound. Great business in my opinion. So overall, so far, I think they've been okay. I think give me a time to to Alex at left back and, and, and trust it centre back. Give him a bit more time because you can't judge you one game. Mate. Talk about game time, obviously. But. So we've got time for a day because he's, he's covered just about every, every one of them. Right? There, it's just it's. Uh, I've covered it on the one piece. He didn't cover it. Uh, no, he didn't. Cover, so didn't so friendly I'm obviously, I'm obviously going to come to you and yeah. uh, mm-hmm. speak to you, because the two goalies weren't even mentioned yeah. there, right? But uh, I've got, I've got to give you some sort of talk. You know what I mean? I need to let you talk somehow. Uh. Oh, that's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, hey, I'm about to talk and make the tea right. I, I, I think next week he'll be getting invited. Oh, next no. week, Alan, you know what I mean? He'll be sitting outside the suits waiting for the left. Aye. 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 Sinasalo. I noticed he wasn't on the bench on Sunday as well. I don't know if he's injured. Scott Bear, I don't know if he's picked up an injury. Ah, it could well be because we were even debating whether he would be he would be starting at the weekend mm-hmm. there or if it would have continued. Do you think he would have if he was to say he wasn't injured? I don't think so. I think this game was probably too important at quarter final stage. I think the maybe the only game we'll probably see him as the is it the third round or the fourth round of the Scottish Cup? Scottish. The, the one we go directly. It was my first game. We play, mm-hmm. we played over the years, the likes of Kira Clyde. And it's usually one game and it's like the quarterfinals for right. us, isn't it? So, I think that's probably the game that there'll be, be a mark for Sinisalo to come yeah. in. Can't, you need to keep Casper in for how important most of our games are going to be for now on. Uh, just hopefully you can stay fit and stay fresh. But, you look at Casper Smeichel, he's, he's not considered a league goal yet. Uh, I don't really see how he could have done much better. Maybe his positioning for the second goal, possibly, but that's kind of his kind of clutching at straws a wee mm. bit still. That was a, was a good header that was kind of at the other side of the goal than where he was. So he's done really, really well. Uh, been a proper kind of stalwart and he's been really professional in his, the way he's come into Celtic. So still not conceded in the league, you know? Aye, that's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm really pleased with how. Uh, how Casper's going at present. Hopefully that, that continues yeah. for, for the time, be, time being anyway. Uh, then I'm looking into the kind of left back position. Uh, Xander, Valle, <laughs> Valle, whatever you want to call him. His name's Valle. Yeah, his name's Xander. Right. You call him Xander. I'll call him Xander. Okay. Uh, as I said on the, on the phone and the dial we can't really judge him and trust it at the minute. I'm no one, we don't want to jump the gun, we need to kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. They've only played kind of 60 minutes, 90 minutes, yeah. whatever that may be. They've only played that amount of time, so for me, we need to give them the benefit of the doubt. Did they have a few kind of points that they did they look 100% sure about things, maybe a wee bit nervous, probably. Did they look decent in parts? Yes, as well. So I'd be sitting in the fence with this one in a minute, I'd, I'd want to see a lot more of these 
two players before I make a proper judgment yeah. call on them. Uh, then you're moving into midfield, you've obviously you've got your best player on all, Paolo Bernardo. Mm -hmm. Aye. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got Paolo Bernardo that's come in. Mm -hmm. Paolo's been kind of unlucky not to be in the team all the time. Uh, and I, I spoke to I spoke to one of you about it. I think it'll be this year you'll see Paolo coming in and he'll get a lot of minutes. I don't think he'll be the number one starting priority, but that's yeah. not his fault. I think he's been absolutely exceptional mm -hmm. this season so far. Tremendous. But it just so happens that there's probably three players that are above him at present. But I expect Paolo Bernardo to grow and uh, kind of move on, step it up a level within the next year. And I think if, in all seriousness, we're probably looking at that Hitati might move on, whether that be January or next year. I could see maybe a relatively big bid coming in for him. So that might be the perfect you get a hang, transition. You got a hankies ready? Ah, no. <laughs> so I, th I think that could no, be... No, no, that's for half ten, he'll keep a hankies for a minute. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's a different half ten, man, that, uh, mate. Come on, you, we're in a... Come on, early doors, man. That's a family show and you're uh, coming away with stuff like that. Come on. But I think that could be the perfect transition if Hitati was to move on. I think Paolo Bernardo has the ability to kind of step up and fill that void. 100%. Uh, and given him another six months or a year to kind of bring on his game and progress. Yeah. And so we've got to, so we've got to bode well for the Celtic game, team going forward. Uh, I think on the angles as well, I, you can just tell right away that he's got quality. He's a level above any man. Quality. Has he done anything at present that's been absolutely amazing? No, no, but we're all watching him on the ball and we can see that he's got that kind of level, that he's got mm -hmm. that potential, that he's got that ability. You can just you can just see it right away. He scored obviously a couple of penalties that have been goalkeeper low chance with, with high pressure, them. I know, both uh, games. Mm -hmm. So it I, I think we Especially on Shanklin shooting big pressure behind you. Uh, I'm like, aye. I'm I'm like ten, ten million, uh, that'll be right. <laughs> but it just shows you that how can have a broke the calculator uh, that day as well, don't uh, you know? Because obviously he's, it was 11 million, no 10. Just stick to football, Craig. Aye, just, just, just stick, stick to, to football, Craig. Hammer throw. Hammer throw, But uh, it'll be interesting to see, and I'm looking forward to see what, what the Engels is actually capable of, because mm -hmm. I don't think he's shown what he's actually capable of just now, I think there's far, far more to come. Oh, 100%. Uh, Luke McCowell, as Ryan says, I think it's a very good value deal. Uh, I think we've brought, we've obviously we spoke about uh, last night, the other night, about uh, Awata leaving. Mm -hmm. And I think probably McCowell was that direct replacement. Uh, maybe not exactly the same type of player, but he's that guy that's going to come in and I don't see him starting many games, but he's he's a threat for the bench, he's a guy that's going to come in and, and, and cause problems mm -hmm. and if we need to change it up in whatsoever then he's, he's definitely a good option to have and I'm kind of quietly happy that, that he did sign uh, and I think he will do reasonably well uh, we're looking at who's next? Adam Eder, that's all that's left isn't it? Adam Eder, mm, I don't know I don't know Careful. I think, I think he needs to with that price tag, and it's not, as I've said before, it's not his fault that that price tag's on his head, but he's going to be judged on that price tag. He is going to be judged in what he does with that price tag. And as of yet, a goal coming off the bench in the Champions League and two goals against the kind of championship side in Falkirk. Is that good enough? Three goals in two games, mate. That's a, that's for nine and a half million, I think we'll want a lot now for the start of the season. I think we are. Uh, I'll hold judgment just now. Uh, I still think we we will expect a lot more. Many games, kind of games has he played? Many games has he actually sell. played in for the beginning of the season? But that, that's what, if we were paying nine and a half million for something, you'd be expecting them to play every game. And that's has he pushed enough to play the games? Has he improved enough to play the games? Has he shown Brendan enough that he's saying, "Wait, I'm playing the games." Uh, whether you're playing two up front or I'm replacing Kyoko, has he done that, um, that enough? Because for a nine and a half million player, that's what I'd be expecting personally. That's, that's, just, that's my opinion. I just think with that kind of price tag on your head, people are going to have massive expectations of what you're going to do. Because we yeah. broke our transfer record only for to be broken again. We are the angles, mm -hmm. but we broke our transfer record to bring in Adamida. I think, see what you're saying on that, right? 
I'll get your thoughts also, Man City's finished. Thanks very much. Uh, Man City's speaking. I think when I do me that, I think no matter the price tag, Kyogo's still going to be the main man. I think he'd be brought, he'd be too, brought yeah. in to obviously help, <coughs> be, be, help Kyogo, but I think there's going to be different games where you might see Adam Eder playing Dortmund or you might see him playing away to Zagreb. There's, there'll be purposes of certain players that like Bernardo might come in away in Europe for more legs. There might be certain guys come in for certain games. McKibben might come in against Ross County after playing Europe. <coughs> there's going to be certain players that will play certain jobs. I think Adam Eder will get a game time. I'm similar to you. I think there's going to be games where it's going to be stuffy and he might need to play but listen I've I've said that I'm going to give him a bye for a, a few weeks to get himself fully fit because obviously he's came to Celtic no really he's a full season in Norwich but he didn't look fit in the last few weeks so I'm wanting to give him time now probably to the end of the end of the year see how it goes but the price tag to the manager no one it's, it's us as fans we, we are thinking because they've paid that money that he's got to go and score goals but the manager's obviously got a different view it he's as long as you have got a different team. view, also. But I want you as, as mm -hmm. I just thought there is, as JP saying that, do you think maybe he does in a no win situation here? Because he's got to be judged off the fans about that price tag. But also, the fans are saying that he won't get in because Kyogo starts. I think that's a majority. So, how can he justify that price tag? If he can't get in because no, that's a good point. Yeah, the thing is, is nobody's guaranteed for me, nobody's guaranteed to start in the team. You've got to work hard, you've got to earn it. The problem is with Ida is the question you've got to ask yourself is does he make an impact? He's done it for January. So this isn't a surprise. Mm -hmm. Him scoring in the Champions League other night wasn't a surprise. He's already proven that he can score big goals for us. And that's the uh, one the Scottish Cup final for us, we goal. Mm -hmm. Um he scored at Ibrox that they needed a world day to uh, to manage a draw against us. So he's more than capable of scoring. He scored one big massive penalty at Easter Road. Mm -hmm. So he's more than capable of scoring big goals. You talk about the rest of the players. It is the early days with a boy Vai. Um I, I like to look at him. I thought he played he played quite well for his first game. Um I do think obviously the question was asked at the Ireland show. If he had Dyson Maeda with him, uh, would they have been better? No doubt in my mind they would have he'd have probably been a lot more comfortable and more relaxed. Yeah. Because he would have had to do less work. Um with Louis Palmer, obviously Louis Palmer, he was in the clouds somewhere or he wasn't even in, in the stadium that day. But you look at Austin Trusty, again, apart from one moment, maybe in the first half, I thought the big lad looked quite composed and he was very good with the ball. He's, he, he's comfortable stepping in as well, away from, like coming out of centre back and coming into the midfield with the ball. So, again, it's early days with these boys. Um, I don't want to be disrespectful to Falkirk. I thought they were excellent. I thought it's the best footballing team we've played against so far this season. Yep. Um, however, there will be tougher tests for Austin Trusty. Just say if he was to play against Dortmund or teams of that ilk. I don't, I don't doubt that for a minute. Where he will be tested more. Engels, I don't need to see enough anymore of him to know that he's quality. He's, he's been a great find uh, for the recruitment team and the manager and the board and everything. It's been amazing to get somebody of that quality in. In my opinion, he's helped mm -hmm. us really forget about Matt O'Reilly very quickly. Because yeah. I thought we, I thought Matt O'Reilly would have left a big hole in the Celtic team. And that's not happened. We don't even miss him, in my opinion. Um, Luke McCown, I've loved what I've seen for the lad. He's full of effort, he's full of energy. He's smiling. And he scored against Hearts. Again, that's a big game for Celtic yep. as well. For a lad to come off the bench and actually score. I know people are going like that. Well, Craig Gordon's still done better. The wee man had a, had a shot at goal and it went in. So, it's a goal. Um, I don't care whether the goalie's standing right beside it or miles away from it. It's, um, at least he wasn't like Jack Butland and standing outside the Fords when Kyogo had his shot. Know what I mean? He's still trying to get a mega bus. He's trying to still trying to get a mega bus to go and, <laughs> to go and get it. Um, but, uh, the, I'm, I've been pretty complimentary to the new boys. I think they've all... What I think, lads, as well, I look at a different way as well, I think they've brought a confidence level about the squad. Mm -hmm. And they've also helped push guys on. So, you look at Liam Scales, you look at Greg Taylor. These guys are churning out performances. And Greg, by the way, Greg Taylor was sublime on Sunday when he came off that bench. Oh, he was, he was. He was unbelievable, he again. Was. He made a massive difference. Yeah, he did. Um, so, this is what I'm saying. You, you're taking Taylor out of the team, we're all going like that. Where's Greg Taylor? Fans were actually saying to me, JP, we missed Liam Scales at the weekend. 
just for his composure and everything else he does, because a lot of the play that we do comes through Liam. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I can feel the wee man's heat coming <laughs> off his thing, mate. But from the beginning of the season, nobody can Don't argue. Me. Nobody can argue. That two, two in the morning for me to get Liam Scales. Liam Scales is is <laughs> uh, he's done well, uh, and it, again he's been pushed on by Austin Trusty. Yeah. So Adam Ida, you know my thoughts on Ida. I love him. I think he's he makes a big difference. He gives the team confidence. He gives a different attribute up front and um, yeah I don't think of Paolo Bernardo I feel heart sorry for him he's playing in a, an engine room there that's littered with quality um, you look at Callum McGregor Rio Atati and the Engels what I will say though is and I do agree probably going to upset you here but if Rio Atati keeps getting the ball away and keeps under par performing domestically then I do think Paolo Bernardo will be like, right, thanks for the jersey, Rio. Go and you have a seat next to Brendan. He has to bring his consistency back. Yes. Uh, yes. You look at, he's been kind of half the boil a couple of games, and then you look at the Champions League games during the week, there was beyond exceptional. So he has yeah. to bring consistency back. And let's see the, the Rio, we all know, kind of game in, game out. Game out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, I do agree with you, Alan. I think a couple of them, uh, maybe even Kyogo as well, this could be their last season with Celtic. So what I would say to Celtic fans is, is just enjoy them while they're here because, again, yeah. probably come January, plans will probably need to be put in place to... Well, I'd imagine with our manager anyway, I've got every faith that he's already on the ball with stuff like that anyway and he's already looking for guys to come in and, and be the next person to take us forward. But... Overall, I'd, uh, listen, as a Celtic fan, I don't think any of us have got much to complain about. The team's winning, they're looking good, we've won the Champions League the first time. Complimentary, uh, complimentary, comprehensive win. Um, 5 1 1, my biggest one in the Champions League ever. Uh, and a great performance. Now, obviously, tougher tests lie ahead, starting for a week today um, when, we, when we take on Borussia Dortmund. Again, we'll cover that near the time. I actually think Luke McCown will play on uh, Saturday, boys. I really do. I think the team changes on Saturday and I think Luke McCown comes into the midfield because Brendan will have an eye on Tuesday night when we take on Dortmund and I don't think he'll play too many heavy hitters, uh, too many of the, the, top, the top lads, the Engels. And the, I, I think Luke McCown will... Because I also think Luke McCown would have played on Sunday if he wasn't cup tied. Yeah. So I think Luke McCown comes into the midfield on, on uh, Sunday. Which I, think, I, thought, I think he could come in, uh, McCown. Um, could play Bernardo and him and McGregor in the middle of the park and obviously Engels and Hattati on the bench give them a wee bit of a, a respite for the game against Dortmund I think we've got the option now of doing that in that match mm-hmm. like you said that engine room has got a bit of quality in it now you can do that so um, you've got even guys at home who need in the squad recently as well so you've got plenty of options in there um, I think that could happen because mm-hmm. um, I think you, like you've said there I think you could have an eye on Tuesday as much as the next game is always most important you've got to have an eye on the next game personally I think knowing what's going to happen um, against Dortmund in, in the, the Tuesday night well as Sir Johnson be fit Carter Vickers I wouldn't even play him until he, if, he, if he's 80% fit don't play him against Johnson because you have obviously got trust and skills there to come in I know the two in my left footed, I get that, but I do feel that they should be able to adapt, yeah. um, especially if Alison Johnson is playing. Um, um, I know personally, uh, you can play Alston, but am I comfortable with Alston playing Scott, even in Scotland? I, I'm not. After that performance at the weekend, I think it's. I don't know if you can. I know people are going to say, I said it the other day in yeah. the Ireland show, he gives his all. If we play with Celtic, we would give our all. That's the first thing you do as a football player. He gives you all. Nobody plays football and for Celtic because he gives his all. Aye, it's part of why you've got to that level because you leave it on the field. But you, you need to have a, a sense of ability and yeah. quality. Listen, I'm, I'm for is not a bad player. He's just no up to level, in my opinion, to play with Celtic week in, week out, and it's someday that you can depend on him to know he's got to do a good job. Do you know what I think the frustrating part with Alston is, though, Ryan? He has showed flashes of good, right, right goodness and bits of quality. Because Aye. effectively to be with Celtic as long oh, as he's been with him, mate, you must be at a certain degree of level that you can. I think for me is go and handle it as well. Because Ange played him as well, didn't he? Was the Scottish? Would we have kept him for this amount of time? Probably. I don't think so. I don't think so. If he was the likes of. Um, Do you think if he was Scottish, he'd get as much as a hard time he gets? If his name was. But, uh, Tony, Tony Santana or something. Because of the well, look at, well, 
guys like Burnaby get a lot of stick, he's Argentinian. But for guys who have been here before, they've got a lot of stick. Um, it's not just, I get what you're saying, because they've come through. Do you think Burnaby get a stick though because he's a player? Or do you think Burnaby get a stick because he's off the field antics uh, as well? But a bit of both. I, I, I don't think Burnaby is absolutely rotten. I just think he's not up to the standard that maybe we as as fans and the level that we want. We want to sign guys that are going to take us ideally to improve and improve and improve. Not every, if you want to come squad player, is going to do that. They're going to come in and be maybe like a water up and share steady Eddie. Helps you in maybe certain parts of the game and then he's maybe back on the bench next week. I think Do you know how me Bernabe is exactly is exactly what Red Van Yilmaz would look like if he went for a stag doing Magalhaes? <laughs> <laughs> I, but I do, I do think, sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Is that? Cut that out now, I'm um, <laughs> I, do, that? I do think what you're saying there in terms of um, guys maybe changing he can win. Um, they will have an eye on obviously um, mm-hmm. the Dortmund game, but I think with the uh, with the, the, the squad you've got the, I think the, the biggest part of your squad is probably the, the middle of the park um, yeah. you've been mentioned one guy I will mention it's probably a bit of bulkiest the guy that obviously I didn't mention in the first bit was Bernardo I think I stopped my neck on the line when they signed permanently that I think he will, will be the next big player potentially take away angles that will go for top money I think the guy's an absolute baller I think he's got everything in his locker to be potentially starting every single week with us but like you mentioned there, the manager has mentioned, nobody's a stick on. I get what he's saying, but McGregor's probably got a bit of stick on every week. Mm. Schmeichel, Vickers, Johnson, Kyogo will be fully fit probably as well. Mm. Engels will be fully fit, so... Scales. Scales, ah, scales and man, not the new, I think. Taylor. Oh, oh, definitely, I tell as well. So, there's only going to be nine times out of ten when there's a big game came up at Celtic just about every week. There's only going to be one or two changes. The majority of the team's always going to stay the same, so... I'll let you to Big man's still maybe. raging. He thought uh, he didn't know about signing Salah Salah. He was gutted when we signed him. He thought Tony Warner was coming back, didn't he? But and it kind of shows uh, you. I don't know what you feel. Uh, I don't know what you feel on that. <laughs> 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 I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what you, what you feel on that, right? On oh, then you can come back on that and all. About obviously Scott Bain, right? He's third choice at the moment. It shows you really what he thinks about him when he's not even getting a game in, in, the, in the cup game. He's on the bench. I, I've watched him, Ryan, right? See, he's gone to the games, obviously, the Champions League game, a, I know. He's coaching. Aye, aye, like, aye, you aye. can see him mm-hmm. talking to the goalkeepers mm-hmm. when he's doing the drills with him, and he's he's teaching, well, he's not teaching, but he's telling. Supporting. Supporting, aye. like Caspar, and he, he's then talking to him. And tell, so I've watched him doing it with Stevie Woods, and I'm just wondering if there's maybe something in there, Alan, that is Scott Bain going to, is he going to become a goalkeeping coach? Could well be, man. Uh, I thought he was great in Batman and all, but... <laughs> Aye, he was good in that, wasn't he? Aye, well, it could well be. He's I don't know whether I prefer him with a mask on or off, to be fair. I have a mask on when he's playing for us anyway, I remember some of the appearances he's had, but fair play. Take me, he takes his goalie tap off, he's still got a burning track on it, he turned up the Celtic Parkway on. Aye, probably, I know. But a Dundee, Dundee tap underneath that, Aye, I it. Dundee tap. Aye. I thought he knew McCann right in the middle of it. <laughs> But fair play to Scott Bain, he's, he's living their dream. He, he might not be the greatest goalkeeper in the world, he might not be the greatest goalkeeper in Scotland, not be, not be any means, but... He's still better than Mike, still better than Grab Douglas, I'll tell you man, he's still <laughs> got to a far better level than Mike Grab. He's earning a good wage, he's, play, he's, he's in the squad week in week out usually with, with Celtic, he's there kind of training every day, so fair play to him. Uh, do I think he might be a coach in the future? There's every possibility. Uh, obviously, at this stage that he's not playing football, we might have turned his head to that he wants to do that kind of later on in his life. So, fair play to the guy. Do you know by Grab Douglas is the only goalie I've ever known to thought the net was for stopping the ball? Honest to God. That's what, honestly, he thought, he thought the net was for stopping the ball. Aye. So, but I, we'll, we'll be interested to see you at the weekend anyway. I, I personally think we'll play the majority of our strongest side until maybe 60 minutes. Uh, I think that I think it'll be too much for it to go two weekends in a row without playing most of your squad, most of your first team together. Uh, but I do see, but we need that familiarity mm-hmm. uh, for Tuesday as well. We need these players to be back playing each other and only do that kind of day in, day out and training as well. But I do expect the majority, maybe no Carter Vickers, but I think the rest of the team that plays on Saturday that starts, I think we'll start on Tuesday. I think we we will line up pretty strong. And do you think Brendan's going to do a team meeting on Monday in German? <laughs> Gucci belt. 
Because <laughs> 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 <Aye. laughs> obviously he done man in Spanish, uh, didn't he? Uh, Apparently that's how he speaks to Louis Palmer. Well, boy, a, 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 good guy, a good friend of mine that sits his healthy part near me was telling me that he... he is that the same, <laughs> same, same guy who says Jackie Mack is Sammy's, Sammy's no, personal no, trainer? No, 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 that wasn't him. <laughs> uh, no, that was... Uh, you, you don't know that story, do you? No. The guy that sits... Uh, he's not there now, I've not seen him for a while, but he used to sit five rows behind me. But you could hear him, he was really, really loud, right? So one time uh, he, he's telling a story and he says... Uh, Jackie Marcus, I love him, I love, absolutely love him. And we are all turning around, because at this point, you're in gross, because he starts telling the story as to why he loves him. I just think he's brilliant, man, look at him, he's physicality, he's strong, he's a big boy. That's what happens when you get good personal trainers, and somebody says to him, I think his name is Tam, Tam, who's he, how do you know he's got personal trainers? Everybody knows. Big Salmon asks his big PT. Big <laughs> Salmon asks his personal trainer. I was like, ah, how do you work that out? Ah, he's because he's his countryman. Because he's Greek. Because he's Greek. <laughs> oh my God, man. The guy actually believed it. Oh, uh, bro. You know, that's... That's his countryman, <laughs> so therefore, Georgie Samaras must have been Jack Amakis, oh, his personal that trainer. That Kiriakos mind, I read it. Aye, aye, he was big, 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 big Sammy, just sitting there, fam, right, lift the weight, lift aye, the weight. Big Sammy's <laughs> like that, lift the weight, you dumbbell. Aye. <laughs> 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 oh, bro. Aye. Man. Yankee Bravos, three sets of ten. <laughs> why bees, why bees, Jack Amakis? Why bees, Georgie, come on, why bees? Three sets of ten, Yankee Bravos. <laughs> Chuck your legs up in the air, you know, and get your legs up high, come on. Uh, you could just picture it. What do you think, Anna says, I think you'll go strong, I think you'll all make some changes? For Sunday? Uh, uh, Saturday. Saturday. I do think you'll change, I do think you'll, I do think you'll change. I, 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 I saw each saying we'll go strong. Going strong would mean Luke McCain would still play, because he's, he's a good player. He, he, listen, he's not his depth, the boy, mm-hmm. you know. That says to you before, he doesn't look like Willow Flood and the, the, the jersey's drowning him, you know. The jersey look like a tracky on me, Willow. But, uh, no, as I said, you go strong, you can go strong even with Luke McCown and your team. I do think changes will be made, I don't think you can ask them to go go to war on Saturday night and then a couple of days later go again with the same intensity. Yeah. I just, I, for the life of me, I just can't see it. I don't, I don't know how it's possible, in, my, in all honesty. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make any sense to me if he, if he was to do it. If he does, fair enough. I'm not going to grumble and say, why did you do that? But like two weeks is too long a time for the players not to be playing with each other. Uh, especially as going into that Dortmund game, I would like just to have our top team playing together, whether that be for a half or 60 minutes. Yeah. So that they get adjust to playing with each other again. I know they do mm-hmm. day out in training, but in a match day. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably the way Brendan will look at it. I've been long a number of, I've been wrong a number of times, so I might be wrong again, but I just see him playing. No, I can understand team. your thoughts, mate, I really do, because again you want to keep going in the league, you want to keep the momentum going, you want to keep going strong, so I get it. Do you think um, this is where obviously we've mentioned about the kind of between the new and Christmas it's going to be quite heavy? Um do you think this is where the I don't want to say change too much. But this, this is where is, the squad gets used, This mate. is where yeah. Brendon will need to be a wee bit kind of game management. Yeah, type. yeah, oh no, hundred percent. Especially guys like Carter Vickers if he's carrying injuries mm. and he's having to take injections to play. You can't have him no. taking injections. No. That'll ruin him. I'll ah. destroy him eventually. Mm-hmm. You can only so many injections you can take. Unless it's maybe injections you normally take for a half ten show, and uh, it does be funny things to you. But that's a different story. But the the, the way. The way that goes, there's only one way it can go, and it, it's going to hinder him. Mm-hmm. And he's going to get to a point where he's just too sore to play football. Um, Alistair Johnson, this, goes, this stems back to his international Copa America. Nah, he's he back, picked up a wee bit, no, it was his hammy. You know he he's felt back. his hammy. It started off with his hammy. It's affected his back now. But now ah, it's, now okay. it's, it's right. travelled up into his back now, um, for what I've heard. And what's happened is his back went into a spasm. Is that? In what, the Slovan game. Was it? Ah, is that, it took half, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ah, his yeah. back went into a spasm, and he, you could you could actually see him telling Brent. When I watched the game back on TNT Sport, you can actually see him telling Brendan it was My his back, back but it, it happened. But this is where this is where your squad's going to be stretched. This is where you you need. That's why we needed the the bulk and bloatedness to the squad because you, you're going to have to play these guys. You, these guys can't all just sit on a bench and mm-hmm. sit in a stand on their phones watching the game for air. So they need to be used. 
And we shouldn't have any fear as fans for Brendan. Brendan sees these guys day in and day out. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is right, he, he's made eight changes here on Sunday. Problem is, is they've not all played together a few ah, times. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, when you chuck a Lennon done it, remember against Utrecht, threw them all together and Aye, they just mm-hmm. didn't, you could see them all, they didn't know each other and they played like they didn't know each other. Um, but when you do it and you do it that way, then you need to build it, you need to gradually bring them in. And I hope this is obviously them going to start like Vi and Trusty and these boys will still be getting to know their teammates as well. Because uh, you can train each other, right? But anybody who's played football, relationships on the part. Anybody who's like. played football any level, or even if you play football, you just know it's the same as when you do something together one one day or a few weeks in training. You can you can do drills, and mm-hmm. but having that on the park is different because when you're only the park when you play each other, like Kyogo, I think the biggest thing I can probably say that how it puts us across is when Hitati plays, Kyogo makes different ones. He knows where. Hitati's going to play the ball yeah. and the, the manager did mention it last year Hitati's basically vital to Kyogo because Kyogo makes runs sometimes you, you see the wee man making runs and he's like ah because sometimes they're not nope. getting the ball to him uh-huh. I'll bring you in on this I think Kuhn is vital for Kyogo because he picks him out every time I think he's vital to this uh-huh. team you look at the you look at the Slovan game he just and you look at the Man City game he flicks the ball around the corner and it goes into him Kyogo again finds Kuhn I think they too I've got a good relationship and I think... You could probably say that about my Dan Kyogo as well. Uh, Kyogo yeah. makes the runs that if you're a decent player and you're kind of putting the ball in the kind of positions for him, he's going to f- you're going to find Kyogo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of nine times out of ten, he's going to make, make that run that if you put a good ball in, he'll be able to end it. So Kuhn's been absolutely incredible so far this season. I've uh, been really excited about him. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really kicked on in comparison to last year because we were starting to get a wee bit or as a as a player we signed. But I think that pre-season that he's had, it's just done the world a difference because he has been absolutely exceptional uh, for the start of the season and the pre-season we've seen. So mm-hmm. uh, look forward to the rest of the season and I think he will kind of step up a bit and uh, push on. Yeah. I think that's about us now. It's yeah. We covered most of what we wanted to get through the day. Um, just before we go, folks, as I said at the beginning, the Celtic Unrestricted View are hosting a live night with Joe Muller Saturday the 19th of October. And it is indeed where we are just now, in the Morven Lounge. Tickets are available, or should I say wristbands are available, um, if you want to come up and pay your tenner. That says the wristband you'll get on the night for the... The live event, the live event, sorry, live event. I tell you, I've slipped in this morning, boys, and it's it's backfired on me a big thing. But um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. If you want to come up and inquire about it, you can come up to the bar itself yourself if you live nearby. If not, you can contact us in any one of our social media: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. If you're new to the content, please like and subscribe. Yep. It's totally free. And it helps us bring this fabulous content and us three sitting in here, acting daft and talking what we love doing about Celtic and everything else and bringing a... Trying to talk some sort well, of Well, trying to talk some sense, aye. <laughs> dabba dabba do. Dabba dabba do, aye. You've got Fred Flintstone here just sitting with... That's it, right, two nuns and a bath. Aye, two nuns and a bath. <laughs> right, but apart, above all else, take care and we'll, we'll see you again hail, soon. Hail. Take see care, guys. Bye-bye. Hail, hail.